Let's take the courtroom scene mm -hmm. in A Few Good Men and uh, break it down by beats and what are some of the parts that make it so memorable, aside from the infamous line from uh, Jessup toward the end. Sure. Well, it depends if you're talking about the whole courtroom, the whole trial, because the trial actually begins at the midpoint, uh, for sure, and, and then it ends at the climax, really, and carries all the way to the end of the movie. So through the whole trial, it's been using a number of sort of key structural devices. One is you want to, sh you want to move back and forth between the hero being in control and the opposition being in control. So you want the audience to be kept a little bit off balance. At times we think, okay, now that Kathy really is winning, but then, then the Kevin Bacon character, I forget his name, the, the prosecuting attorney, he comes back, oh no, now he's winning. Oh no, now he's winning and now he's winning. So you don't want it to just be bad, 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 and then good, 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 good. It's gotta go back and forth, back and forth. So there's sort of peaks and valleys to the emotional, experience of that overall sequence. The next thing you want to do is it also combines a couple of key structural devices. One is anticipation and one is surprise. Anticipation means we're trying to figure out what's going to happen next. And you can increase that device or you can strengthen that tool if you use what I refer to as superior position. So let your audience know something that some of the characters don't know. For example, we know that Kathy's going to try and going to call Jessup and try and get him to admit what he did, but nobody else knows. So we're anticipating what's going to happen when Jessup gets up there. How is he going to go about doing that? So that's actually curiosity as well as anticipation. Okay, we anticipate um, the, that what's going to happen when he calls up the airmen that were in the flight tower for this non-existent flight and calls them up to testify. So we're curious about that or we're anticipating what's that going to be like. And, and we're anticipating what's he going to do now that um, Murkison or whatever his name is has committed suicide. So a lot of it is what's going to happen now? What's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? But sometimes the audience doesn't want to try and predict what's going to happen next. They want to be totally surprised. So the surprise is, um, one surprise is when we learn later that those two guys from the tower didn't know anything about the flight. They were just a red herring. They were just to make, um, make uh, Jessup believe that he had evidence that he didn't have. We weren't given that information ahead of time, we in the audience. So that created a twist, that created surprise. So sometimes you want to lead your audience toward anticipating and expecting something. Sometimes you want to turn the tables on them or jump out and go boo or do something that's completely unexpected. The next thing that makes that work is the obstacles, just like through the movie, are getting bigger and bigger. So the testimony becomes harder and harder and harder to get to the truth. And finally comes Jessup, who we know is going to be the most difficult thing to overcome. I mean, just imagine the movie if Jessup was the first witness. And then after that, we had Cuba Gooding Jr., who was one of the, one of the small parts in this movie. It's ridiculous to anticipate because instinctively we all know you've got to save the biggest and the best for last. And then, even in that final confrontation where Jessup's on the stand, it's like, okay, we, we have some more superior position, and that is we know that he's terrified of doing this, and that if he fails, he's going to get court-martialed. Now, the other characters may realize that, but they're not, they aren't, aren't aware of how frightened Kathy is, and they don't know what he has up his sleeve, like we in some ways do. We know he's going to use the, the shirts that he saw in his closet, but we don't know how. So again, it's just this, this combination of surprise, anticipation, curiosity, conflict, peak moments, small moments, and then one last thing, and that is if you just look at the arc of Jessup's testimony, you will see that it starts out everything Kathy's trying to get him to say doesn't really get very far. Yeah, he's showing him the phone logs and yeah, he's showing him he didn't pack and there are questions, but he's, but Jessup is just very confident. He says, is this all you got? You know, foot lockers and phone calls? You know, I hope you got something more than that. These people are, they're on trial for their lives. And he's so sure of himself. But then as soon as he asks him, why two commands? Why the two orders? 
If he was so safe because of the first order, why did he have to be sent away from the base? And then we see the turn, and now we see that everything's going to shift. And where it seemed like Kathy was going down and Jessup was, go was rising, now it shifts, and now Ka Kathy is in control until finally Jessup sort of, you know, um, ruins his own future by confessing that he, he, and he of course, did order, order the code red. It's just all those things in such a wonderful combination that it's really hard to pick it apart that way because it still takes away the magic of it because when you see it, you just get so caught up in it.